Welcome to part one of the Apache HVAC New Features V2012 presentation. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Timothy Moore uh, with IES uh, for the Apache HVAC uh, New Features demo. Going to uh, run through some presentation slides version of this, uh, and then we'll um, uh, just to kind of get everything on the table, then we'll actually go into Apache HVAC and uh, demo a bunch of this stuff live and then take question and answer at the end. All right, we'll go from here. Okay, so just, there's a couple of slides at the beginning on uh, Apache HVAC and sort of the general approach and what Apache HVAC offers. Um, and so the, the first main new feature is that the um, there's a new interface uh, and there are a number of other tools for the library and editing and new water side features and I'm going to go through each one of those uh, more specifically going forward. And we'll look at all of these in Apache HVAC, so this is just a quick summary at the front, give you an idea what's there. Uh, there are quite a number of new prototype systems and as a result we've also uh, broken down the library of prototype systems into some categories and some folders and you'll see there are also some user folders in here, so there are ways to export and, and import systems. Uh, and there are also quite a number of options now uh, for when you import a system, do you want to bring it in with various plant equipment um, and other things, you know, ones that are unique to this file that you're bringing in, that are referenced in the file you're bringing in, or everything in the file you're bringing in and so forth, and for different types of plant equipment from chilled water loops to room units and so forth. Uh, you can also uh, save profiles that are associated with, with a, an HVAC file into the library and then bring them back in when you import it. Uh, and the same with any kind of uh, fuel types or energy end use categories. Um, so and there are similar features now for exporting systems. You, you can now select uh, any HVAC network or any subset of that HVAC network and export it, and again, you have similar options with you know what things you um, uh, want to export with that. <clears throat> then in multiplexing, we now have a sort of a new bar at the top, and it puts a container around the uh, prototype system. And same for the multiplex, there's sort of a green bar at the top and a green background on that, and that gives you a new way to access multiplex. Uh, sort of the region or the, the multiplex set of, of zones in the system. Uh, and there are some new options that come up when you add zones to a multiplex, uh, just to give you some more flexibility and control over that. Uh, the toolbars have been uh, updated and uh, somewhat reorganized to try to group things together in a little bit more sensible manner. Uh, and then we have uh, also the, the, there's no longer a separate sort of multiplexing toolbar. Uh, some of these multiplexing functions are on the toolbar and the main toolbar, and then uh, the multiplex edit dialog you actually now get to by clicking on the, the green bar at the top of the uh, multiplex region. There are some great new features with drag and drop, move and copy for components on the network, and so I think, uh, and especially with uh, controllers, you can now stretch the leads. Uh, there are some new drawing tools. Uh, that allow you to draw the paths between things uh, very quickly if you want to do that. <clears throat> there are a new set of toolbar buttons in Apache HVAC for sizing systems. And so they give you access to all these dialogues and to creating the system sizing reports right from the Apache HVAC toolbar. Uh, and you no longer, for this method, you no longer need a file called proposed.asp in order to go through the sizing process. It will do the sizing for whatever HVAC system is currently open, uh, unless you choose to change that selection in the um, sizing run dialog over here on this uh, on this side. <clears throat> there are a number of new water side features, uh, including a heat transfer loop, uh, which you might think of as somewhere between a hot water loop and a chilled water loop. Uh, presently, uh, in the, the current release, the 2012 release. This is focused on serving water loop heat pumps, uh, but in the future it will have expanded applications. It's actually quite a pow powerful uh, tool with respect to all the different kinds of things that are in it. I'll be showing some of those. Uh, there's sort of extensive 
temperature control for the loop, the typical loop parameters, uh, then there are a number of different ways to acquire heat, to put heat on the loop, and including you know, boiler uh, sets and sequencing as you would have on a hot water loop. Um, there's uh, an idea of the layout of that loop. Um, generally speaking, if I start sort of at the, um, the, the return here where the sort of loads are coming back into the, the heat transfer loop, first thing you can do is use solar hot water heater to preheat. If you, if you choose, you can have a uh, primary loop only or you can have a secondary and primary loop with this common pipe arrangement. Then um, coming back into the, the system side on the left, <coughs> there's a new water source heat exchanger that allows you to model uh, a lake, a well, or any other sort of uh, water source that you might be able to schedule uh, or use a profile to determine the source side temperatures on that. Uh, then there's the normal heat recovery option. You can get heat from a condenser loop on the uh, cooling side. Um, there is the air to water heat pump, same model that's been in there before as a preheat in the hot water loop. Uh, combined heat and power, same thing again as on the hot water loop, then boilers as on the hot water loop. And finally, um, another uh, water to water heat exchanger in the case of an open cooling tower or if you use a fluid, fluid cooler, uh, the heat exchanger is assumed to be built into the fluid cooler. Uh, and that's your heat rejection device. So you can see that the heat transfer loop functions both as a loop for acquiring heat and a loop for rejecting heat. And it operates between a set band of controlled temperatures. And this is used uh, to serve <coughs> presently on the load side any number of zone level uh, water to air heat pumps. And these water to air heat pumps can have uh, either a heating coil or a cooling, cooling coil connected to them. And, uh, and the coil in that case being a uh, DX coil that's spe specialized for this application. <coughs> Um, so that the, the heat pump is actually at the zone level and removing heat from the loop or adding heat to the loop and then the common loop is able to transfer heat from one zone to another, uh, reject excess heat or acquire heat as needed. Uh, so I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in the demonstration uh, part of this and show you some more of what's in the dialogues. The water source heat exchanger has pretty extensive controls uh, and uh, as does the heat rejection. Actually, that's pretty similar to the, the fluid cooler and cooling tower uh, models for heat rejection on the normal condenser water loop. Then there, these are the dialogues for the uh, water to air heat pumps, uh, more generically referred to as uh, water loop heat pumps. Uh, but in this case, we have a couple of different um, sort of curve sets and things for those. And we will eventually add more curves. Uh, but right now, there are just uh, a couple of different performance curves in there. <clears throat> then uh, there are new uh, coils that work with that. So whenever you select uh, water to air heat pump in the coil dialog, you get a slightly different set of uh, options in the coil. And these are very similar to the uh, DX coils. Uh, and in the case of DX, and I'll show you in just a moment, uh, we've actually sort of split the um, shape characteristics, if you will, the sort of per performance characteristics of the DX unit from the uh, coil side. And the coil side is sort of represents the size characteristics of the unit uh, so that it sort of scales the um, uh, condenser and uh, compressor side of things with the coil. And you have a more straightforward interface uh, to having the design conditions and all of that located in the coil dialog, uh, whereas the um, Previous view, you can see for the uh, water to air heat pumps, you have just the rated conditions in this dialog. And the same has been done for the DX cooling. <clears throat> On the chilled water loop, we have some new pre-cooling options. And we'll go through those in a bit more detail. Uh, but you can now use an independent uh, cooling tower, fluid cooler, and or water source heat exchanger to pre-cool the return water. Uh, and this is separate from the cooling tower or fluid cooler that you would use for heat rejection uh, with the condenser side of a chiller set. So 
<coughs> whereas on the heat rejection loop, you still have the uh, integrated water side economizer, uh, which uses the same cooling tower as the condenser uh, heat rejection. This would be a, an independent cooling tower that you want to set up uh, separately just for a pre-cooling operation, which can have different design conditions and different sizing characteristics and so on and so forth. And again, you can also use a water source heat exchanger in this case for heat rejection. Um, there, is, there are some enhanced options for heat transfer from condenser water loops uh, to hot water and heat transfer loops. I'll show you some more details on that. But uh, in the sort of simpler version, um, you can do sort of multiple sources. And in the more advanced version, you have an explicit uh, heat exchanger. Uh, and in doing this, we've, we've sort of moved the recipient uh, display. Uh, it's displayed now on the, <coughs> the provider loop, but it's uh, determined on the receiving end. So there are two uh, models now for heat recovery from a condenser loop to either the hot water loop or heat transfer loop. Uh, one of them uh, is a sort of simpler model that uses a fixed percentage as we had before. And uh, that allows you to use multiple heat recovery sources, in other words, more than one condenser water loop. And uh, then there's an optional water water heat pump um, uh, there in that. You can just tick a box. And it's a very simple thing. For this, it just gives you a fixed COP steady state performance uh, with a simpler uh, percentage model. Then if you go to the explicit model for interloop heat exchange, you actually then have a model heat exchanger between the loops with a design effectiveness, which is assumed to be at the design temperatures of the respective loops that you're connecting. Uh, because this is connecting two uh, loops, then it only uh, allows one source loop, uh, in this case, and not two of them. The effectiveness varies uh, with the delta T between those loops. And <coughs> uh, then there's also the water water heat pump option. In this case, it's a little bit more sophisticated. not still a, a full-on water water heat pump model, uh, but it provides uh, two data points that you can set in terms of the thermal lift between the loops and two COPs associated with those two data points. And then the COP is interpolated uh, between those two data points when the thermal lift varies from the two data points that you've given it. <clears throat> in radiators and chilled ceilings, uh, we now have the capability for these devices to see the water loop temperature to which they're connected. So you don't necessarily specify the uh, temperature control in that device. You could still do that if you intend to have uh, some kind of a sort of bypass valve or something at the um, zone level that would allow you to mix water and, for example, connect a uh, radiant floor to a, a relatively hotter water loop, and you might want to you know, mix some, some return water from that same floor loop uh, just so that you don't have the floor running quite so hot as the water loop it's connected to. So in that case, you can still do the proportional uh, control of that floor temperature. But if you want to, as in the case of a radiator or, or many other uh, kinds of devices <coughs> or tilt ceiling, you might just simply reference the chilled water or hot water loop supply temperature and that way, when the loop temperature is reset at the system level by an outdoor reset or something like that, this device will see that change in temperature. There's also number of units here. You'll see that's a new entry. And that allows you to make, um, uh, to define a device in terms of a, a, a unit size. Uh, so contrary to the example that I've got on the screen right now, you can define a device, for example, one kilowatt radiator and then just sort of multiply it here by the number of devices that you want. If you wanted 20 kilowatts, you'd have a 20 times multiplier there. So some simpler ways, and that's actually the step towards auto sizing. In the next um, uh, release, we will have an auto sizing feature in here with quite a bit more going on, telling you about the design sizing uh, and so forth. Um, I mentioned the separation of the performance characteristics uh, for DX cooling from the, from the sizing for each instance. Again, this is the cooling coil dialog now for DX cooling. And you see in the cooling coil dialog 
that you have not only the selection of the, the defined DX cooling equipment type, uh, but also a number of design parameters related to that and the sizing parameters and so forth. So you're essentially sizing the DX uh, cooling coil and the condenser and compressor uh, components of the DX cooling scale with that using whatever uh, performance curves and rated COP values you put into the types dialog. Uh, lastly, there are some usability enhancements. <coughs> We've expanded some of the HVAC network integrity checks, and we'll do more of this in the next round. Um, but for now, for example, there's highlighting of opposing flows. So if you do have opposing flows, instead of just getting a node number, you get some indication of the path on which this is occurring. <coughs> There are separate oversizing factors for fans and a new uh, system level parameter uh, for the minimum fan flow rate for the whole system. Uh, we have in the uh, thermal templates uh, sort of a related item. There's now uh, infiltration rate in terms of liters per second or CFM per unit facade area as opposed to floor area. So some of you will appreciate that on the load side of things. <coughs> We have a new uh, <coughs> use of OR connections in Apache HVAC, which allows these to couple controllers without sensors. And it means that there are a couple of uh, controllers that we're using for night cycle fan operation that will be a little bit more intuitive now uh, and some other uh, user applications for those. There are some refinements behind the scenes that should make uh, some of the modeling uh, go a little bit more smoothly for coils and water loops. And uh, we also have a number of new predefined HVAC systems uh, using the VE 2012 capabilities. And we will have uh, about a, a dozen more uh, new systems, uh, predefined systems, in the next feature pack uh, coming up in a matter of, oh, I don't know, that's probably in a, a month or two from now. A couple months, I think. Uh.